The first stars of the plant galaxy, known by some as Lotosia, blossomed from the buds of the original flower itself. The central flower which gave life to all the planets that stemmed from it. Lotosians oversaw the blossoming process from primordial flowers that created life in each planet, while remaining veiled from being fully seen by other plants. They told tales to their young ones about the stories that grew from the flowers. Each fully blossomed story was known as a fractal bloom. Some lotus beings even chose to forget who they were and allowed themselves to dream that they were a plant on one of these planets. One of the greatest tales the Lotosians passed down through the eons was this one. All plants in the worlds of the Lotosian galaxy grew with a consciousness that climbed towards the rays of the central flower that gave them life. On every planet where a primordial flower bloomed, a plant species became sentient. Verdanthia was one such planet, which gave rise to the Broccolarians. Over the ages, most Verdanthians forgot that they once came from primordial flowers. Eventually, the Broccolarians believed they were the only species that still preserved theirs. Yet on the other side of Verdanthia, one species was determined to find their long-lost flower. They were simple carotenoids that had lost their sense of purpose, but one among them was determined to reforge their destiny and build an empire that he felt was rightfully theirs. The secret power of the Carrot Empire was discovered at the end of an Arctic expedition. Some of their ancient scrolls had hinted at a power that once belonged to the rabbits. A genetic power, one that might have even created them. Some of the carotenoids were slow to believe that old myths might be true, but their revered shaman and king had sent them with an assurance that their quest would be worthwhile. Their journey took them to a dark cave, where all of their wildest dreams turned out to be true. A timeless egg contained a flower that once touched, transformed the carotenoid's DNA forever. A species which was once of an ordinary stature and intelligence, instantly became godlike. The twelve of them that returned from the expedition branded themselves as such. Each became immortal and acquired a mutation that gave them an incredible power. While ten of them were still orange, one of them turned yellow and another became purple, both of them pushing the limits of genetic superiority, threatening the orange carotenoid named Radix, who crowned himself king. He had the particular mutation of telekinesis and he created an empire of his own, which he used to conquer unsuspecting plant species. After a brutal campaign across the western lands, Radix set his eyes on the great broccoli empire in the east. He was tempted by old legends that hinted at the power they held. The broccoli empire had always been a matriarchy. The priestesses deemed which broccolarian warriors were worthy enough to guard the great cauliflower tree. The last great tree guard known as Iron Stem proudly defended the tree, but he didn't gain renown until his role in the great potato battles. All sentient plant life was disturbed by the subterranean potato menace which brought many clans together to vanquish the enemy. It was through this new alliance that the Beetroot clan became close with the Broccolarians. The Beets had been a tribal society, following archaic rituals that suddenly paled in comparison to the mighty civilization they were exposed to. They grew to be in awe of the insight of the rooted priestesses and were impressed by the ancient technology held by the tree guards. The Broccolarians appreciated their reverence and began to share with them knowledge of architecture, science, and advanced weaponry. The trust between clans became so great that the Beats now also worshipped the tree, and the tree guards soon let them become a backup military force. And so the Broccolarian men mostly became monks rather than guards, as many believed there would never be a threat as great as the Potatans once were. Everything changed when the Carrot Empire arrived. The Beats watched in disbelief as the tree suddenly burned in the distance. Now, Every beat prepared to vanquish the carrots with a fury and a vengeance that had never before been seen on the eastern continent. The Broccoli Empire never imagined that their great cauliflower tree would ever burn. The great warrior Iron Stem felt his horror finally give way to urgency as he knew exactly what the carrot soldiers must be looking for, the secret sacred to the Broccolarians. The tree was known for giving them sentient life, but the tree guards and high priestesses knew the reason for that was because of the primordial flower that once grew there, which gave life to the tree itself. The tree worship began as the Broccolarian priestesses used it as the base for rooting themselves into trance states during the day. It became a gateway for accessing the mycelium mind. 
The burning of the tree wouldn't have been so horrifying if it wasn't where the priestesses were always rooted, which meant that they also burned with the tree. But the tree guards had kept the primordial flower in its original egg, within an ancient broccoli mothership, which only Iron Stem knew how to use. He made his escape, believing in the prophecies that the end of times were near, and that it would be up to him to preserve his entire species. What he didn't know was that that morning, a broccolarian daughter was born. The priestesses named her Verdea, after the first priestess of legend. This last broccolarian daughter was carried safely into the forest on a river of vines, guided by the Mycelium, where she was found by a small band of monks. Meanwhile, the beet army approached the carrots with an increasing taste for revenge. The carrot army was not expecting the total fury the beets would unleash. The telepathic purple carrot, Intellectus, invaded the broccoli empire by using the powers of a mind shield, which prevented the broccolarian priestesses from seeing the carrot army approach. Deceiving their noble-hearted tree guard was easy in comparison. It was only after the tree was burning and the cries of broccolarians resounded around him that the carrot king, Radix, was disappointed. He did not see any traces of the primordial flower he desperately sought. The escape of a broccoli spaceship caused him to realize he had been duped, but his real anguish began when he heard the drums and horns sounding from the east. He expected the sentient plant clans to retaliate, but the sheer numbers of beetroot soldiers surrounding the carotenoid surprised him. They were not only outnumbered, the beets even had advanced suits the carotenoids had never seen before. Moments of stunned surprise gave way to the discharge of plasma blasts, as the carrot force was suddenly and ruthlessly being obliterated. The carrot army did not know how to react, as their bodies were sent flying and their weapons were useless in contrast to the beet's mighty force. Radix found a vantage point where he could command the twelve carotenoid gods, knowing only their genetic powers would give them the edge. Intellectus was not afraid, however, and instead only saw a worthy challenge that excited him. The Carrot Empire had seemingly met its match against the Beat Force. The twelve carotenoids that considered themselves immortal gods stood no chance against Beat Blasts that disintegrated their molecular structure. The carotenoids were mercilessly decimated by such a trained and advanced military force. Many of the Carrot Gods fell before the Beats, until only four remained although the last four seemed to be truly invincible. One of them, Palineo, had the powers of regeneration, and while staying close to Rutan, the yellow carrot of incredible strength, they were able to punch their way through the beat's ranks. Meanwhile, Intellectus, the telepathic purple carrot, used his powers of mind to confuse the enemy. He was soon able to create a mental shield of chaos that targeted the beat's sanity until they lost their minds. It was a simple matter for Radix, the Carrot King, to use his telekinetic powers to rip their beat bodies to shreds and turn their own weapons against them. When the dust settled, few soldiers remained on the battlefield, besides the last four carotenoid gods. A red sun shone down on the river of beet juice that flowed before them. It was at this moment in Intellectus's drained state that Radix realized he must imprison him, for he could never remain king next to such a force. Intellectus's eyes met Radix's and understood this, moments before Radix knew the time for the showdown of minds was now. The telekinetic carrot god king Radix felt compelled to have a battle of minds with his telepathic brother Intellectus after they won a fierce battle against the beats. Radix believed there was only room for one king, and Intellectus's raw power stood in his way. So he pitted his mind and will against him in a psychic duel that would determine the fate of the carrot empire. Radix's mind felt the monumental power of Intellectus try to overpower him, but the purple carotene god was weakened from the recent fight. Even though Radix's telekinesis gave him an edge, he knew he had to act fast. He found he was able to pin Intellectus down and quickly imprison him deep underground. However, unbeknownst to Radix, Intellectus had actually acquired the qualities of a nightshade and secretly wanted this to happen, as his powers would only grow in the darkness. Rutan, the yellow carotenoid of great strength, saw this in the distance, heartbroken, and realized that Radix had no end to his ambition. Rutan ran away, casting off his former allegiance, questioning all he had done in the name of the Carrot Empire. He swore to find justice for his brother. The only other carotenoid god left stayed, feeling loyalty towards serving Radix until the end of the Empire. Meanwhile, deep in the forest, unknown to all on the battlefield, 
the last daughter of the Broccolarians was traveling with a small band of monks in search of a mysterious mushroom village, which finally began to reveal itself in the distance. Thus ends part one of this story. Stay tuned to find out what happens next. Thank you to these patrons for supporting the saga. Much, much more is coming.